couple of days ago, I was posting up concept art from my new Isis series book, Isis, Bride of Dracula. And I was, as I was posting up a link in one of these black fantasy Facebook groups, I ran into one of these pro-blacks who decided to ask me, where are the braids and the afros? And I took a little bit of offense to that because, like braids and afros or natural hair, mean that a black character is truly black. Um, I find that to be quite insulting because when it comes down to characters, you want the people to judge the content of their character, not the color of their skin or the texture of their hair. That's not what makes a character interesting to me. And that's not what I believe makes for a great character because a lot of people, you know, they think that because someone has natural hair that it means that they are so-called more blacker. And that's not the case at all. In my own personal experience, I've seen, you know, a lot of these so-called natural hair women, they'll go out here and they'll be dating white guys and non-black guys more so than they would black guys. So that really does not tell you if someone is a true sister. Um, what tells you if someone is a, is a black woman who supports other blacks is her actions. And that's one of the things that I try to make with the ISIS character in, you know, another ISIS story I'm doing this year called ISIS Imitation of Life, where I make the point that the ISIS character um, supports black people and cares about black people by her actions. And that's what we need to start judging people by. Someone having natural hair really does not mean uh, that they are really concerned with black issues, black culture, or even other blacks. I've seen natural hair sisters out here who will go out here and they will, you know, they'll say all the rhetoric, they'll pump the fist, they'll say that, you know, black power and all that stuff, but they go home to a white man and they sit there and talk and, and will talk a whole different game to that white guy or that Hispanic guy or that Asian guy. And you and a lot of these guys, these pro blacks will sit there and think, oh, that's a down sister, when that's not the case at all. And I can even go back to history and talk about some of these natural hair sisters that a lot of these people, you know, praise and think that are so down, like your Angela Davis. I mean, back in the day, everybody thought she was this powerful pro-black female, but she was out here married to a white dude. And the same thing with your Alice Walker, who wrote the critically acclaimed book, The Color Purple. Everybody thought, oh, she's a strong black woman. She has natural hair because Alice Walker had all these natural hairstyles and stuff. And Alice Walker was married to a white guy and had a biracial child. Um, you cannot go based on appearance. You have to go and dig deeper than appearance. And it's just sad that I run into people like this who want to get into skin tone debates with me based on Isis' skin tone, Isis' hair texture, and they want to have these arguments saying that the character isn't black because it doesn't meet their standard of black, and they want to talk about braids and afros, when you really need to judge the co content of a, of a character's character. That's what makes a great black character a black character. A character that I believe, when I, when I write Isis stories, I try to show how she is a black character because she's willing to go out here and make efforts to help other black people. Um, in ISIS series stories, I often talk about things that are very strongly, you know, important to black people, like group economics, um, teaching culture, and, you know, dealing with life as a black person. These are the things that I want to, I want to you know, focus heavily on my story, I mean, in my stories. I talk about, you know, black culture, like the black sororities, um, like in the, because Isis is, this was the founder of the Thetas sorority, which is focused on teaching black girl, black girls, um, how to survive in the, in America and how to, um, be good wives to their husbands. And that's what I believe what made her a good character. And she's focused on, you know, things, helping people in the black community with, with economics and stuff and supporting black owned businesses and starting black owned businesses. And to me, that's what makes, you know, that's what a black woman of character does. And that's what a black female, 
you know, who cares about black people does. Um, not, I mean, natural hair does not say much because again, I know a lot of natural hair women who again have white boyfriends and biracial children. And that, does that tell you that they're a true black sister on the outside? Yeah. They look like, yeah, that you're a true, strong, independent black woman. But on the inside, you know, they're living a completely different life. And a lot of people don't understand that they're, that black is something who you are on the inside, not something that you project on the outside. And a lot of people, they look at their natural hair and they look at the dashikis and they listen to, you know, the 50 cent words in the shaming language. And they think that that makes a black person black and that, that makes a person pro-black. That's, that's not the case at all. With many of these pro-blacks, from what I've seen, you know, they project that outside, but then on the inside, they're living a totally different lifestyle. This is the person who would go out here and, and date or marry a white person first. And how does that make you pro-black if you're going out here, going outside of your race? You can't say that you're pro-black if you're out here dating white people and seeking the approval of white people and trying to get the attention of white people. And that's what I've seen, you know, with a lot of these pro-blacks. They'll come at you and say, this isn't black, but when you go and look at uh, beyond the surface of them, everything is about white. And that's what makes them, you know, as I see it, really backwards and dysfunctional. Now, this, now this character isn't the only one that I've used to, you know, that the only black character that I run into with this issue. Uh, when I, when I was writing another series called All About Nikki, um, in the second season, I wrote an entire episode making a commentary about these pro-blacks. And in this episode, which is on in All About Nikki Season 2, I'm going to leave a link to the episode in the um, description box, and you can read it on Smashwords for free. It's called All About Face. And the Nikki character runs into one of these natural hair pro-black sisters and she tries to shame Nikki by telling her that she's a fake, she's a phony, and that she's the real sister. And the natural hair sister tries to hustle her by saying, I'll bet you $100 you can't go without your makeup and your um, hair, su hair, hair supplies. And the Nikki character agrees to the bet and she proves, and over the course of the episode, we run into all the things that the pro-blacks do, like the shaming language, the 50-cent words, the pretentiousness. And towards the end of the episode, we Nikki finds out that this pro-black girl really is nothing more than a hustler, and she's got a white boyfriend, and she's eating ribs. And it's a very hilarious story um, that really makes a hilarious comment on these pro-blacks, because a lot of these pro-blacks, they, they, they appear black on the outside, but they're white on the inside, and they crave attention from white people, and they crave approval from white people. And they'll sit there, and they'll try to shame you and bully you and tell you your stuff isn't good enough or it's not black enough. But the irony is, these are the people who covet the attention and approval of white people more than anything. Um, what I'm trying to do with the ISIS series is create that positive image of an African-American woman of an African-American heroine, and it's not going to be, you know, to anyone's standard but mine. I'm trying to just make the best character possible. I mean, she's supposed to be the goddess next door, a friend who comes and helps people in need, and she tries to help those in the black community. You know, she tries to make that a priority, and it's just, po I want to, and all I want to do is create positive stories so that little black girls can have their own heroine, because if you go over to Marvel or DC, or any of these other companies, your black female is pretty much in the background. She never gets any stories, or if she does ever get a story, we always see her on the arm of some white person or some non-black man. And I don't do that at SJS Direct. Um, the ISIS character, when in the first ISIS, was married to a black man and she had a black child. Um, she's had relationships with other black men, and she still, you know, socially interacts with black men. So I believe that makes a stronger statement about, you know, ISIS's love for black people more than anything. And she often makes efforts to, you know, be a part of black culture and be a part of black history. And, you know, I make that effort in that character. I would because I really want to show by the content of her character that ISIS loves black people 
not just the color of her skin. Because to me, you know, there's a difference between a black character and a character who is black. A character who... A, a black character is just black on the outside, but has no depth, no personality, no substance, no voice, and nothing there that the reader of color can connect to. Whereas a character who is black is a character on the inside who is black. They relate to black culture, they have black experiences, and readers can identify and relate with them as, as people. They see them, and they see themselves in their experiences. And that's very important to me as a writer to do, because I, I believe true diversity comes from people seeing different experiences and different stories featuring African-American characters, not just a character who was a certain skin tone. That's a really, really hollow um, presentation of a character to me. If you just have a black character, what's the purpose of him being there? I mean, we need a reason to care about this character. We really need a reason to connect with this character. And we need to see a story there. And I don't really see that with a lot of characters. And that's one of the reasons why I created Isis character, because I wanted black girls to have that type of character with that type of story so that they could see themselves in her experiences and, you know, see someone they could relate to. Um, and we can go beyond, you know, superficial things like skin tones, hair, and really get into the meat and the substance of, you know, the black culture, the black experience, and really, you know, give readers something, you know, substantive to read whenever you pick up an ISIS series adventure. Um, ISIS Bride of Dracula will be out this year, and ISIS Imitation of Life will also be out this year. Um, there will be a third ISIS sto series story coming out also, ISIS Samurai Goddess, um, where the goddess next door takes on some kung fu killers and in an action-packed, you know, martial arts ISIS series adventure. So there's going to be three ISIS series coming stories coming out this year, and you can catch up on the ISIS series at Amazon.com in paperback or in ebook form. Um, uh, the ISIS series stories are very easy to read. They're fun reading for readers of all ages, and I believe you'll enjoy them. Um, there's a lot of substance in there. And I really want readers to really get to know this character beyond, you know, hair and skin tone. Because, again, what makes someone black is not just skin tone. It is who they are on the inside. And that's something I try to do with all of my black female characters, whether it be Isis or Nikki Desmond, Marilyn Marie, um, Matilda Crowley, or Colleen Anderson. It, it, I try to bring a character that's multidimensional and rich to readers. And I want readers, you know, to see that... Black is who you are on the inside, and whatever, and black can be anything, is because black is a, has different shades and textures, and I really want people to understand, you know, that there's more substance to black than hair and skin tone.